This is a 17.5 Trinity RevTech X Factor. Now the rotor in this is an 1150 rotor. That's a TEP 1150. And the TPE 1150 is an 11.5 millimeter rotor. Uh, the Gauss is approximately 1400. Uh, the stock rotor that comes in this motor is the TEP 1119. The Gauss is higher, it's approximately 1700. Now, uh, some of the things that you're going to experience uh, is the following. You have a rotor that's a smaller diameter. Just by having a smaller diameter, if all else were equal, it, it's going to rev a lot higher and a lot easier because there's less rotating inertia, right? The mass is closer to the center. Uh, and it's, it's a millimeter difference in diameter, which is 0.5 in radius, which is significant for something this size. Now, the other thing too is the gauss. You have less gauss, 300 less gauss, which means uh, the magnet is not as strong, therefore it's going to be easier to rotate the magnet. So one of the things that you're gonna notice with swapping a rotor, uh, such as this one, the 1150, is that you're gonna get far more RPMs. The KVs are going to be insane. Uh, don't be surprised once you see the data table or if you're, when you look at the screen. Uh, but in the data table I compare it to this stock rotor uh, and there is a large difference when it comes to speed. So for light vehicles, uh, low traction surfaces, this is a great rotor to go with. Heavier vehicles, uh, higher, higher traction, Probably not. The stock one is probably a better choice. Uh, so it just depends on what it is that you're doing. Now, uh, one of the nice things about Trinity is you can buy all the different rotors and then just swap the rotors. Uh, if Trinity comes out with another model or different cans, it's usually just the exterior uh, that's uh, doing some changes, maybe for more cooling, lighter weight, etc. But to be honest, if you have an old one, just play around with the rotors. Uh, some other brands, whenever they have the newer version, uh, it's really not a newer version. It's just a rebranded old version with a different rotor. That's really what you're having. Uh, so the purpose of this video is just to show you how the rotor can affect things. So you can swap the rotor, get a lot higher speed. Uh, you can keep your stock rotor as well if you want and just have a little more torque. Or you can swap for a higher diameter which you probably don't want to go with a greater diameter uh, than a 12.5 millimeter diameter for an on-road touring car. Uh, you really don't need that much torque. Uh, so 12.5 is probably the most you want to go. This is in the 11.5. This is on you know, the low end of the spectrum. One of the things to note, uh, if you've been looking at the timing, uh, there, the spread is actually very good. It's generally one or two apart. Uh, I've tested some other brands, other motors, and they can have a six degree difference uh, between phases, which is a massive, massive spread. Uh, now, a uh, quick note, if you've been paying attention to the amps, which you will see on the table, it barely consumes any amps uh, for the same timing. Uh, which means that you're not going to consume as much battery, which means that your voltage is going to remain higher in your battery in comparison to something else. But again, it's for the application. Think about it as fuel efficiency. A 2-liter turbo engine is probably great for a small sedan, small compact pickup, like maybe a Ford Ranger. Is it a good idea for maybe a 1-ton pickup? Probably not. Uh, so that's the idea behind the rotors. It really does determine on application. But this rotor, I was surprised at how it screams. I was expecting it to be faster, no doubt. But the speed amount, this is very impressive. Now, depending on when you see this video, if you see this video immediately 
during launch well this is all i have uh but maybe if you see it sometime after uh the launch uh, i will hopefully have another video out with a different trinity rotor on the same exact motor uh it would be a 12 millimeter diameter the gauss should be about the same close to 1700 uh so uh if you're not subscribed go ahead and subscribe hit the bell get notifications so hopefully once i have that uh rotor comes in and i can test it uh you can go ahead and watch what the results are uh but for now uh this again uh, the RPM, well, the KVs, I should say, are very impressive, as well as the low amp draw. So let's go over to the data table. And here's the data table. Now, I'm not really going to look at the Phantom motor because the Phantom motor and the Trinity, they're very similar. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that comparison, but I do have that comparison in other videos uh, where I do compare the stock Trinity to the Phantom motor. But uh, in this video, really what I want to talk about is I want to talk about this screaming rotor. So this is a, it's a lighter rotor. It's an 11.5 millimeter rotor. This is the 1150 that I've been testing. And compared to the stock rotor, the 1119, uh, it's a millimeter. So this one's a millimeter less in diameter, which whenever you have mass that's closer toward the center you're going to have less inertia so this thing just naturally will be easier to spin plus there is a gauss difference this one is about 1400 gauss plus plus or minus this one's about 1700 plus or minus uh, so that is a difference between the two uh, and there's also a huge difference in the amp draw for the same reason because it's a lot easier to spin it's going to require less amps to actually rotate the motor. Uh, so if we look at the amps, so we have uh, 5.5, let's see, I think the closest comparison would be this 3.2 versus this 3.3. Keep in mind, it's the same motor, it's just a different rotor. That's all I did, I just swapped the rotor on these. Uh, so 3.2 versus this 3.3, if you look at the KV, and we're looking at 2,973 kV, almost 3,000, versus 3,500. So we have 500 kV more, which is a massive difference uh, between these two. And now we're going to ignore the revolutions uh, and, and the reason, well, I guess I could type in the calculation. So revolutions are going to depend on your volts. This is something that I've mentioned in other videos. Uh, so really it's the KV and the amp draw that we want to compare. So compared to the amps, this one really revs high. Uh, if we go higher up, let's just say five, well, I don't actually have a five because in just this four degree difference, we'll call it five degree, it really jumps up. But here we're now at 4,000. Here we were at about 3,000, well, 31. Uh, but if we were to lower this, we're still going to be probably about six, 700 kV difference for similar amps. Now, that 5 amp range, that's really where you want to be uh, if you're going to be running for, let's just say, an entire race, 5-minute uh, race. Uh, you don't want to be consuming more than 5. Uh, it, your battery will deplete quickly. Plus, and, and when it does that, and then your voltage drops, and if your voltage drops, then your revolutions will drop. Your KVs are going to stay the same. Uh, let's say so. If your let's say your KVs stay the same, but your voltage drops, then your RPMs will drop as well. So then your voltage will start sagging. Uh, those are things to consider. So about five five amps is good, uh, and these are all seventeen five. So again, same exact can, and there's nothing else here that will come close. Uh, I'm going to focus on this uh, 3.2. Uh, so 3.2, there isn't a 3.2, but even if we look at this 4.4, uh, it is way under. Now this is the track star. So this is a Turnigy track star. Turnigy track star and eco power, to be honest, they do not compare. They do not compare. There's a reason why you have the price difference between them. Both of these motors are close to $50 as of this video. I think, well, I believe that's how much I paid. I'm not sure how much they are now. Uh, versus these, 
this was $100 and the rotor was maybe another $45, $50, uh, somewhere around there. So these are things to keep in mind. So if you, if you have a vehicle, say a 112, uh, 112 scale uh, or something light, uh, this is maybe something you want to consider. Or if it's a low traction application where you do, do not need all the torque, this is probably the rotor to consider versus this one is going to have more torque. It's going to be significant. And the reason why there's two reasons, one, the larger diameter and two, uh, more gauss. Uh, so again, gauss, approximately 1700. This one's approximately 1400. Diameters, 11.5 millimeters, 12.5 millimeters. But notice the KV difference compared to the amp draw. So depending on your application, uh, I hope this is useful. Well, uh, and on that note, I do hope this has been useful or at least entertaining. Uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you have not, and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,